sacred sites and mass sacred sites and do healing. Uh, we bring up uh, Pandora's box uh, of all the unresolved pain, all the unresolved anger, all the unresolved grief. Um, and it is our intention to bring those stories up for healing. Um, and, and all of us know if we don't heal our stories, we project them forward. That drum just has a vibration that works on the land and it works on the history of the land uh, very strongly and indigenous people are so connected to those stories, uh, both the positive and the negative stories of their lands and they knew we were on those lands and we, they knew that we were stirring the pot of those lands but all for the intention that those stories be reconciled and that those souls could cross over through this portal that, that we've created with the drum. So I think that that's... Um, no matter what we get put with, it's just loving everything in front of us. It's, that's the only answer there is. There's no more fight. There's no more countering it. And, oh, I could have written back a hundred emails to the emails I got, you know, when my stuff would come up in defense. And I just said, no, it's not to respond to. It's just to send love and compassion. Um, and I think that, that just keep sending the love and keep showing the love uh, is the only answer. Yeah, I think it's very, very important to realize also here on the Hawaiian Islands, the genocide that's impacted the native people. It's a deep, deep, deep wound. Mm -hmm. And that the level of self-mastery and spiritual integrity to be able to get to forgive them, Father, they know not what they do, and it's a new day, and it's a new dawn, and let's live a new life in love. Man, that's a big prescription for somebody to swallow. And so, but yet I love what you're doing. I love what you say. And I love what you've done to transmute that negativity into a real powerful lesson, which even this is testimony. This doing this filming here is testimony and having this issue come up spontaneously. This wasn't planned to discuss this now. But we here in the Hawaiian Islands, and my brother Zion, who's doing the filming, is a native Hawaiian, and he's a native North American. And that this is one of the most critical issues on this planet today, because of all of the cultures that literally the Anglo-American genocidal mechanism has hurt, violated, to the extent that this wound is in our hearts. And if we really want now to evolve into the messianic age, a thousand years of world peace and have it all, everybody get what they deserve and they want in their hearts, then we have got to achieve this, the level of mastery that you have articulated. That is, we have got to get to the same level where you can say, you know, I could fight you and I could battle you and I could battle you with weapons or words, but it ain't going to do us any good. Let's get down to what's really real, which is the love in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry if you're feeling bad because your ancestors and you have uh, been traumatized and abused by people who are not my friends and not my family, and I didn't share my ideology. But the fact is now we have a new world to create, to co-create with the Creator and each other. And so the question becomes, how can we best accomplish that? And it's, that is by conflict resolution, open dialogue, communication from the heart, not so much from the head, and uh, really embracing each other as brothers and sisters. I think it's a very, very important theme of not just Live H2O, but for every activist group today that's evolving. Yesterday we had Aunt Emily and she was talking about the strife of, of her Hawaiian people here, yes. and that was absolutely beautiful. You're going to be with us in uh, Life H2O because we can't do this without you. Yes, yes, I'm going to be, I'm going to be there. Um, you know what? I I want to be part of something that's going to be very big and um, and very powerful. And the thing is, you know, a, as a native Hawaiian here in Hawaii, and that that I know the living water and the living water comes from Akua, I want to send it out to the rest of the world. Yes, and um, not everybody knows that, that Aloha spirit. And, and, and that's why I, I'm, uh, I'm loved by a lot. 
And I went to Washington, D.C. on the 17th and came back on the 22nd of January, 2009. And when I had the thought to go to Washington, D.C., um, Akua's thought to me was, Emily, you need to go and uh, take the Aloha spirit with you. So I, I see how Akua works. Yeah, that's why I love to pray and I love to be in, the, in that spiritual realm because he always opens the door for me yes, in, in, in whatever I want. Yeah. So Akua, just uh, so that we, uh, we're clear on this, Akua in Hawaiian means the creator. Yes, yes, the creator. So tell me, what does aloha mean exactly? Well, uh, aloha means love, and um, I, I, I think that, that, that that's the true essence of aloha is love, yeah. And this is what Live H2O is all about. Uh -huh. We're sending out the love to the rest of the world. Yeah, it's so important. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I think what happens is because of the love of Akua within me, I can be able to love all. And, you know, it's such an awesome thing because to not to have barriers and blockage. So um, tell me a little bit more about your work here. Okay, you know, as, um, as a county council um, lady of this district, uh, my first term when I came in, you know, I was uh, placed as a chairman of the Human Services Committee. And Human Services is, is about everything to do with helping people. And so throughout the island, we have um, different human services um, groups that help the poor people, help the handicapped, help the, um, what do you call them? The needy. Um, mental health, the needy, drug addicts, you know, just all kinds of children. When the children are working, they have this boys and girls club. They take care of the children while the parents are working. When so is it so? Do you is it a lot of Hawaiians that are suffering here on the island? Um, a lot of the Hawaiians are suffering, and a lot of them are in jails. Why yeah. is that? Uh, I think uh, you know they they get a lot of them sometimes get angry for some of the things that have happened in the past uh, pertaining to our culture. You know, like our queen got overthrown. Now, this happened over 100 years ago now, 116 yes. years. Yes. How so, does that feel as a Hawaiian here to have been impeded by the Americans here over 100 years ago? Well, well, for me, you know, I have to say, um, because I used to feel angry when I was younger, but because I have brought Akua in my life, he has helped me subside in the anger, get rid of it, and live for now. Yeah, but before I had him in my heart, in my life, I used to feel the anger. And, and I went through it myself. I used to have bitterness and anger because of what, they, what was done to my queen. And um, some of the... What was the name of the queen? Queen uh, Lili Uo Kalani. And uh, so, you know, back in 89, I was arrested for the first time in my life. I protested against geothermal that you know came to our town and were they were, were going to big build a big plant in this rainforest called Valkele Opunam. I um, I protested and I got arrested. The day I got arrested, I started to sob. Uh, I wasn't. It was in just tears. It was like deep sob from within the spirit. And I was thinking to myself, is this how my queen felt? when uh, you know she got uh, faced with gunpoint and had to give up her monarchy. So how can we help that? How can we empower back the Hawaiian people to your own land? Right now I'm working on a legislation to try to see what we can do. Um, you, you know what, we know that things went down that was wrong and um, so I'm not too sure how it's gonna work out but I'm gonna try. Do you think it's possible that we can coexist, Hawaiians and Americans, with the Hawaiians back in power? Right now, you know, there's um, people, uh, different sovereignty groups in our community that um, have been trying to work towards gaining back sovereignty for our native people. 
I'm pretty sure, I, I'm sure we could, yeah. It, it's just that our people have, would have more chance in surviving, yeah. Because right now our prisons are filled with our native people. And uh, I'm not too sure how much percent, I, I, I know it's more than half that is Hawaiians in the prison system. What are the crimes most often being committed? I think most of the crimes is, is drugs. drugs, yeah. So these drugs come from other countries, I don't know where they come from, and then Amara people get corrupted by using these drugs, and then that throws them into jail, and it's, it's, it's almost a process of genocide, yeah. And uh, I have a vision, and my vision is I wanted to um, do like a cultural center and uh, so I could have, you know, I, I'm looking at some of our students uh, teaching Hawaiian language, I'm hula, you know, uh, culture, uh, food preparation, just drum making, everything and anything that is of our culture. Because I, I really, uh, I'm tired of other people trying to sell us, sell our culture, and try to get rich off of us. In reality, you know, that's one thing about me, I'm sorry, but i got to tell the truth. So I'm sick and tired about everybody else getting rich on, on our culture. We should have our people presenting our own selves to the world.